Hello and welcome to Make and Create. My name is Nick, I'm an artist and I'm an educator at the National Gallery. As you can see today, I'm not in the National Gallery, I'm actually in my studio. But we're going to look at a personal favourite subject of mine, which is still life. The National Gallery has lots of wonderful still life paintings and I want us to look at three pictures in particular. Uh, and then what we're going to do is think about constructing our own still lives. Now, of course, in your home, there will be lots and lots of things that potentially could be in a still life. So we'll be thinking about that. Now, the first painting I wanted to talk about to you today is a painting by Gustave Courbet. Uh, this was painted in the 19th century in about the 1870s. Courbet was a, a bit of a firebrand artist and it's an appropriate painting for us to look at because at the time that this painting was done, Courbet was in lockdown. He, he was in isolation. Uh, so we know something about this. Uh, the painting, of course, is a, is a still life with uh, apple, a quince, a pomegranate. And his sister would bring him these fruits. So the only bright thing in his life at that time was to be able to paint. Fortunately, he had his paint and he had his brushes. And in the six months imprisonment, he was able to paint. Uh, and he painted many still lives. So fruit in a bowl, very simple, very humble, something that I'm sure we could all try and arrange something along these lines at, in our own homes. So inspired by the corvée, I raided my kitchen and found a few simple pieces of fruit and a plate and a uh, very simple glass uh, and tried to create something along those lines. Uh, what I'm very mindful of, of course, is where the light is coming from and in the, in the corvée still life, uh, it's coming from the left uh, and the background, which is extremely dark. Uh, so the fruit, the objects, uh, we just concentrate on those. That's all we're really looking at. And you're probably looking at this and thinking it looks rather underwhelming, and, and indeed it is. Uh, so what we will probably do with our photographs when we've taken them is you can put them on the computer and boost the contrast, maybe increase the saturation of the colours, or if you've uh, taken the picture on your phone, there are various filters that you can use to give a more kind of painterly look to your photograph. The second painting today I wanted to look at is a painting by Luis Melendez, and he specialised in still life. And what we're looking at is everyday stuff from, from, from a Spanish market uh, or a Spanish kitchen at the time. Uh, and he uses these very humble objects, but somehow by the very act of painting them, uh, he turns them into something rather epic. Uh, they become much bigger than they are. I think it's quite interesting when you look at things like this in the painting, that if you saw these things in real life, you would probably pay them no attention whatsoever. But when they're painted, they, they become transformed. Essentially, the picture is made up of cylinders, spheres, and cubes, and they're all containers. And everything they contain, obviously we can't see, apart from the walnut shells, where we just get a glimpse of the walnut, the nut itself actually peeping out from the walnut shell. I'm fascinated too in this painting how uh, Melendez uses perspective. Most of the picture, the objects were looking down on them. But if you look at the jug on the right, it, it's actually a very imposing form. And that's because it's above us. It's almost as if the jug is slightly looking down on us. So here's my attempt to do something kind of in the spirit of Melendez, although a, a more austere version. Uh, what I've done is I've used a very restricted palette. Um, so it might be an idea when you do your still life, so just a thought that maybe a still life which is just made of maybe completely white objects or a still life made of clear objects might be quite interesting to do. Um, but uh, Melendez tended to use his colour uh, in a very restricted way, so that when you do have some colour, it really kind of zings out of the composition. So I've just included the orange here and the slight yellow of, of the small pear. Also, the surfaces are all quite similar. Like in the Melendez, they're, they're all rather um, flat, non-reflective surfaces, uh, so which, again, just emphasises the forms. So. In that painting that we looked at by Melendez, it's, it's the formal qualities that he's very interested in, the very intellectual approach to designing a painting.
Now, over a hundred years before Melendez was painting in Madrid, Willem Kalf painted this incredible painting in Amsterdam. And when we think about still life painting, we often attach the word Dutch uh, to still life, Dutch still life. And that's because in a very short space of time, uh, artists in Holland were able to kind of reach incredible levels of, of perfection in their paintings. Still life as an independent genre had only been around for about 50 years when this painting was done. Uh, what, what I mean is that still lives had existed in ancient Rome uh, and then sort of rather disappeared and only to be reawakened in, in around 1600, where in Italy, uh, Spain, and in, in Holland, this, this independent genre was given a whole new lease of life. This painting is extremely lavish, very sumptuous, obviously painted for somebody very, very wealthy. Everything in it is expensive in its own right, or expensive because it's come from a very long way away. Ironically, uh, in the days when this was painted, if something had come from many miles away, it would tend to make it uh, very valuable indeed. So if you look at the carpet uh, on the table, that's a Persian carpet, uh, an artwork in its own right and highly valued. Uh, if you think of the lemon, it's probably Sicilian. Nothing like that would be available locally unless grown under glass. Again, that would make it expensive. The wine, uh, the glasses, the glasses are probably from Venice, uh, handmade of course, and, and, and uh, exquisite, beautiful things. And the lobster is, although local, uh, as, as is now, a very expensive form of food. So this is a, a lavish still life indeed. Kalf was clearly very interested in deceiving our eyes, making us think that we were actually seeing something real, something three-dimensional that in fact is of course two-dimensional. And he does this uh, by actually pushing some of the objects in the painting perilously close to the edge of the table. The lobster on the plate looks almost as if it might tumble out into our own space. The lemon, which has been kind of elegantly peeled with a knife to, to form a kind of spiral, a lovely lemon spiral shape, looks like it all could almost fall out into our world. And people like this, they like this deceiving of the eye, trompe l'oeil, as it's called, where, where something looks so convincing, you could almost reach out and touch it. So I've searched around to see what I can come up with for the calf challenge. I should admit that I, I do collect objects that can be used in still lives and a lot of these things, to be true, truthful, are um, artificial. Um, the grapes, and silk flowers, the skull as well, and the fruit, it's all artificial. Um, the wine, incidentally, is real. Um, I, I'm thinking about different uh, textures and surfaces, of course, metallic, glass, and this sort of silky uh, piece of material which is, catches the light in, in quite a nice sumptuous way. And I've also tipped uh, the bowl here and the plate here to create a sort of uh, disruption in the still life, to animate it. It's a contradiction really, but to animate something that's very still. But I think that creates interest and certainly a lot of Dutch artists would do that. Uh, the, the, the grape sort of falling out of the bowl. Uh, hopefully uh, you've got some ideas now from what we've looked at and you can create your own still life. What I'd like to suggest is that when you do create your still life, you choose three of the following four items. Um, the first of these is something ephemeral. Uh, the second is something that will be around many, many years from now. The, the third is something of incredibly low value but that means a great deal to you, uh, something great personal value. And the fourth is something new, because everything we've been looking at so far has been kind of old stuff. And we have to remember that when Corbet and Melendez and Kalf were painting their still lives, the things that they were painting were new, they were new things. So, so maybe we could include something that has been made very, very recently. Okay, lots of ideas there. Um, hopefully that's given you food for thought and you can produce something interesting, I'm sure you will. Thank you very much for watching. I've enjoyed talking to you today. Goodbye.